Yay, beginner's class. Let's get on our mats. Starting in a seated meditation. Find your seat. It can be any seat that's comfortable for you. A seated meditation is a really important part of every practice you do in yoga. And it doesn't necessarily have to be separate. It can also just be in any pose you do. Just finding that moment to close your eyes and feel so present in the moment, so in tune with your body, feeling your breath, making sure that the mind is quiet, not thinking too much about other things in your life or the world. Really just honing everything in towards the present moment and what's happening right now. So I like to start with a seated meditation. So we'll just close the eyes and bring the hands on the knees or in between your lap, wherever feels best for you. If seat, if sitting in general isn't comfortable for you, then you can always add props. I always recommend using props in your practice. It's not, it doesn't mean that you're depending on the prop, it just means that it's helping you to feel comfortable in your postures, whether it's a seated pose or any pose in yoga, using props help us find that alignment that will get us to increase our times in those postures. And with time, we'll remove the blocks. Anyways, with your seated pose, you can sit on a pillow, you can open your legs, really whatever feels best for you right now. And let's just close the eyes. Start to think about your breath. Feel the movement of your breath traveling in and out the body. See if your mind starts to wander and if you can just bring it back to the present moment just by thinking about your breath. You can also Listen to the sounds around you, connecting yourself to your environment, to your surroundings, connecting to your senses, things you smell, the taste in your mouth. These are really nice, basic ways to enter a meditative state. Breathing deeply, connecting to the movement of your breath. If you find that it's difficult for you to keep your eyes closed, you can just focus on a point in front of you on the floor as well. scan and see how your posture is today. If you feel tall in your posture, shoulders are back, heart forward, that's what we want to feel in our seated pose, in our meditation. Let's add some head circles here. You can keep the eyes closed or open them if that makes you feel more comfortable. Let's move really slowly. The point of this practice today is just to become more aware of our body, more aware of the sensations we feel when we move our body, as well as connecting our breath to those movements. The slower you go in this neck circle, the more you can really isolate each feeling on each part of your neck. Seeing if you feel any tension or any blockages and then connecting back to your breath and sending each breath to this location of tension or strain and seeing if it releases slowly, slowly. Change direction.
Come back to center, slowly open the eyes. Inhale, the hands come up. And grab your right wrist with your left hand, guiding you towards the left side, coming into a gentle side bend here. Really pull on that right wrist. Feeling a nice lateral stretch here on the right side of your body. In your side bend, make sure you're not just collapsing towards the left side. The movement here is up and over. You still want to feel a lot of space in the spine, length in the spine. Inhale back to center. Reach up with your hands as high as possible, creating space between every vertebrae. And exhale, change sides, grabbing your left wrist with your right hand. Slowly coming towards the right side, keeping that long spine. You can stay looking forward or look towards the left. Inhale back up with your hands. Exhale, let's drop the hands and switch our leg position. So whatever seating position you chose, whatever leg is forward, bring back, and whatever leg goes back, bring forward, or the opposite of whatever you were, way you were sitting. If you were sitting on your knees with both legs the same, so just stay like that. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, let's come into a gentle twist, twisting towards the right side, bringing the left hand towards your right knee, and the right hand behind your back. You can either keep it behind your back here, or if you find that you have a bit of flexibility in your right shoulder, you can grab the left inner thigh. Turn back all the way behind you, looking over your right shoulder. And take a couple deep breaths here, really working on keeping that spine straight, not collapsing, heart open forward. <sighs> Twists are great. For releasing tension from the back, massaging the abdominal organs, helping in digestion and metabolism um, increase. So we love twists. Let's take one more deep breath. Inhale back to center, long spine. Exhale, let's come to the other side, right hand to left knee. Left hand comes behind the back or all the way towards your inner right thigh. Look behind you as much as you can over your left shoulder. <sighs> Breathing deeply. Always using your breath as a tool in every posture in yoga. Every inhale, you want to find length, rising up towards the sky. Exhaling, we find ourselves more grounding, feeling the ground beneath us even more. Going a little bit more into the posture as well as the muscles loosen up. Inhale back to center. Exhale, release the hands down and slowly move to a tabletop. If you have any wrist problems, you can come onto your elbows or you can move the hands instead of beneath the shoulders. You can bring them forward more so the angle on your wrist is a bit wider instead of this 90 degree angle. So choose which hand position is best for you. The knees should be under the hips. Again, you can have more of a wide angle here or more of a um, under your hips, hips distance with the knees. Just make sure they're not too narrow. So you wanna feel nice and balanced here. We're gonna come into cat cow movements. That means we'll inhale and look up and drop the belly. This is cow pose. And then we'll look down towards the ground, exhale, and the spine will arch towards the sky into cat pose. Keep going at your own pace, moving as slow or as fast that's comfortable for you. Just really working here on the spine. This is an amazing basic movement here, working on spine mobility and flexibility. Make sure you're pressing into your fingertips as well, so not all the weight is in your wrists.
See if you can go a little bit deeper now. Maybe you're really arching the spine up, pressing in your legs as you exhale into your cat pose. And dropping the belly, coming into a mini back bend here, looking up towards the sky on your inhales. Just finding a little bit of a deeper movement in the spine. Let's meet back in center. We'll bring the left hand under our right arm, coming into a thread the needle variation here, removing weight on the right wrist, putting our weight into our left shoulder, just for a moment here, releasing tension from the shoulder region. Your right hand can stay on the ground to help you feel balanced, or you can bring it behind your back. One more deep breath here. Slowly come back to center. To your tabletop and then bringing the right arm under your left arm. Coming down slowly, bringing the weight onto your right shoulder. No weight bearing in the left hand. You can keep the left hand here just for balance or you can bring it behind your back. Release your weight completely onto your right shoulder. Going deep into the connective tissues here, releasing any tension from those muscles. And slowly come back to center to your tabletop. From here, we'll tuck our toes under and slowly lift our hips up and back, coming into our first downward dog. If this is your first downward dog, your hands should be as wide as your shoulders, your feet should be as wide as your hips. And move the weight from your hands to your feet. You shouldn't feel a lot of weight bearing in your hands here. It should be pretty even and mostly in the feet, actually. Try to turn your shoulders externally so that you want your elbows to face the ground. And from here, tilt the hips a little bit more towards the sky. This is downward dog. If you feel like your hamstrings, the muscles on the back of your legs are really tight, then keep the knees bent and just work on finding the straight spine here. Both are downward dog. One just is for tight hamstrings and for looser hamstrings. Let's walk our feet all the way forward towards our hands and inhale, hand will come up. This is upward hand posture. You should feel this pose all the way from your feet to your fingertips. Make sure you're not locking the knees back Keep a little micro bend so you feel the weight of your body really over your feet and center. Exhale, hands to heart center. I'd like to go over the Hatha salutations, a variation of it. So you can add this to your practice. It's a circle of postures and you can keep it with you forever and do it all the time. So I really love it. It really helped me in the beginning of my yoga practice as well, just getting these salutations down. So our toes are together and it doesn't matter if the heels are together because the feet are actually triangle and not square. So just the big toes together is important, not the heels. Inhale, the hands will come up again to this upward hand posture. Exhale, the hand will come all the way down towards the ground. If you can't get to the ground, you can bend your knees or you can use props. Props are always welcome, a block, a chair, anything that will help you feel more stable and comfortable. I like to practice my forward folds with my knees bent and connecting my upper body to my thighs because then I'm really working here from the hamstrings instead of from my back um, flexibility. 
So just try this for a moment, bending the knees, getting your upper belly to your thighs, and then straightening the legs. Take one deep breath here in your forward fold. And let's place our hands onto the ground and bring the left leg all the way back and drop the leg, the left knee on the ground, coming into a low lunge. And inhale, look up, stretching the muscles of your neck and throat. Place your hands on the ground and come back towards a plank. Plank is an amazing posture to get down. Hands, over, uh, shoulder over your hands. Weight bearing in the hands a bit, not too much here, and really stabilizing the core muscles. We'll drop our knees towards the ground and our belly towards the ground. Exhale. Inhale, coming into cobra. You can choose to do a half cobra if you have any lower back pain, or into a full cobra, pushing up onto your hands, pushing the shoulders away from your ears and looking up. You should feel a light compression in the lower back here, but no pain at all. If you do, then come down halfway. Still looking up, still shoulders away from the ears, heart forward. Inhale deeply, tuck the toes, and push off your hands, bringing your weight to your feet into downward dog. Exhale here, inhale, look forward, and bring that left leg all the way in between your hands. You're gonna come out of the salutations the same way we came in, dropping the right knee now. Inhale, look up, low lunge. Big toe to big toe, stepping towards the front of your mat. Exhale, head to knees. Inhale, rising all the way up. Upward hand posture, look towards your hands. Exhale, rest. So that was one round with the left leg. Now we'll do the other side on the right leg, and then we'll continue on with the practice. This is a great method to warm up the entire body and all the muscles in the body. Inhale, the hands up. Exhale, come down, forward fold. Bringing the right leg back now, drop the right knee. Inhale, look up. Placing your hands on the ground, come back towards a plank. Feeling strong in your body for a moment, and then dropping the knees and bringing your upper body towards the ground, using a little bit of shoulder strength here. Inhale as you rise to cobra, either half or full. Look up, tuck the toes, exhale, down dog. Adjusting yourself as needed, bent knees, straight knees, and width within the hands and feet are correct. Look forward, bring the right foot in between your hands. You can always help the leg if you need to get it more forward. Drop the left knee, inhale, look up. Low lunge. Big toe to big toe, top of the mat. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, slowly rise up. Upward hand posture. Exhale, hands to heart center. Beautiful. So proud. Let's come towards the center of our mats for a moment and work on this most important basic posture called Tadasana, mountain pose. Your, your feet should be either together or hips distance if you want to feel more stable. Hands will come by your side, palms facing forward. So this can look like a simple standing posture, but it's actually the base of all standing postures. We want to really feel the ground beneath our feet, feel stable on our feet, feel our whole body weight on our feet. <laughs> I could say feet forever. Anyways, we're in our mountain pose. Just close your eyes. Feel this little bit of heat and energy rushing throughout your body just after two rounds of salutations. Feel stable on your feet. Feel the muscles in your legs actually working very slightly here to keep you balanced, to keep you stable. Make sure your posture is nice and open still, that you're not 
collapsing forward with the chest and shoulders, that your shoulders are open and back, heart is radiating forward. The fingers are active as well, spreading the fingers by your sides. Feeling your abdomen region work with every breath. And see if your belly and your lower back are balanced. You don't want to have one of them higher than the other. So if you place one hand on your lower back and one on your belly, they should feel pretty stable and centered, making sure that not one is higher or lower than the other. Again, like we did in upward hand posture, make sure your knees are locked as well. When you lock the knees like this, which will usually happen in hypermobile people or, people or really flexible people without even knowing your knees are probably locked. And what happens is the weight of your legs go backwards and your upper body comes forward. So you end up in this kind of zigzag shape and the weight of your body becomes distorted over time. So we really want to just add this really small micro bend. You can barely see it. It looks like I'm standing with perfectly straight legs. And then immediately you'll feel the weight of your body completely over your feet. <sighs> Let's take one more deep breath here in your perfect mountain pose. And inhale, the hands will come up. Let's interlace our fingers and invert them. Working on a little bit of shoulder strength here. It doesn't matter if your hands are by your ears or a little bit more forward, um, if your shoulders are a bit more tight. So just find your place for you, as long as the hands are strong and up as much as possible. If you can, they'll be hugging the ear region. If not, it's okay as well. And just take a moment here before we come up onto our tippy toes to see if your belly fell forward when you lifted your hands. Sometimes without even noticing, we lift our hands and our upper body will tilt forward. So try to maintain this nice core, Hugs, uh, ribs are hugging inwards, but still we're stretching up. Slowly we'll come onto our tippy toes, activating the calf muscles here, and still maintaining this strong core, coming into palm tree pose. Find a place in your tippy toes where you feel balanced, where you don't go to your tip's edge just to fall forward, you want to find this kind of middle area where you feel stable, where you're pressing into all your toes and the ball of your feet. Feeling stable here, strengthening your feet, ankles, calves. Inhale deeply, straighten the arms a little bit more. Exhale, turn towards the right with your upper body, staying on your tippy toes. Inhale back to center. Exhale, turn towards the left. Inhale back to center. Drop the feet slowly, keeping the hands up. I know it burns a bit, but in a second, it'll feel like feathers. <laughs> Bring the weight towards the right side, coming into a side bend with our um, strong arms here, and look towards the left. Taking three deep breaths here. Feel strong in your feet, just like we felt in our mountain pose, pressing into all the corners of your feet. Inhale back to center. Exhale, coming towards the left, look towards the right. Inhale back to center. Exhale, drop the hands slowly, bringing them by your side. They should feel all tingly and lightweight. <laughs> Let's lift the right leg, coming into tree pose. A really basic balancing posture, helping us to feel balanced on one leg. So there's three variations. You can bring the foot on the floor and press it against your heel, on your calf, or on your inner thigh. Whatever you choose, make sure you don't end up on the knee. It can feel very comfortable to be there with the arch of your foot fitting perfectly on that knee joint but we really want to activate this area here, pushing the thigh or the calf or the ankle against the foot. So we don't want to push on the knee outwards because it doesn't move in that direction. 
So the knee, the foot is pressing on your chosen variation of the leg. And make sure the knee is coming outwards as much as possible while still maintaining the upper body and hips forward. Because sometimes when we open that hip, we'll start turning with the body. And then it's more of a rotation with the whole body instead of just the inner hip working here. When you find your perfect variation in the legs, let's bring our hands to heart center. Palms together and find the point on the floor to help you focus to help you feel really balanced. It's called a drishti, a one-pointed focus. Let's take a couple deep breaths here, feeling the strength in our standing leg while still maintaining a long spine, nice posture, contra pressure between the foot and the standing leg. Feeling the weight just on one foot and how your foot adjusts with that. It's okay if you're tipping a little bit, you're really strengthening the foot here. So even if you feel like you're not balanced or you're weak, it's still strengthening the foot and the leg. So keep trying, even if you fall out, keep going up over and over again. With time, it will become more stable and more fun. <laughs> Let's inhale the hands slowly to come up. When your palms meet together, try to find a little bit more um, length in the spine here, reaching up. <sighs> Take a deep breath, maintaining this long spine. And let's slowly release the hands down. And then the leg with control as if it didn't even happen. Beautiful, let's change sides. Let's shake out the left leg first. I'm sure you're feeling it nice and burned up, which we love. Let's change sides. Standing on the right leg, bring the left leg up towards whichever variation um, you want. It can also be different on both sides. It doesn't have to be symmetrical, even though we all love a symmetrical practice. <laughs> so foot either against the ankle with the foot still on the floor, or on the shin or on the inner thigh, but not on the knee. Again, making sure that the knee is open as much as possible, working here from the inner hip instead of with the whole upper body. Upper body is forward, hips are forward, and then bringing the hands to heart center. Looking at that point that helps you balance your drishti. Taking a couple deep breaths here, just feeling the weight over our one foot, over the right leg. Again, making sure you're pressing against your foot and the standing leg at whatever variation you chose. If you won't press, the foot will probably keep sliding down. So you really wanna activate that, activate your core, feel stable here. Inhale, the hands come up slowly. Maintaining your balance, palms come together, and then find a little bit more length here in the spine, reaching up with your fingertips towards the sky. Still make sure the core is active and you're not spilling forward in the upper body like we said previously. Active core, ribs are hugging inwards. Hmm. And slowly release the hands. Slowly releasing the leg with control. Beautiful. Let's come to a little bit of a wider stance. Um, a bit more than hips distance. Inhale, the hands come up. Exhale, let's come down slowly and grab opposite elbows coming into a dangling forward fold. That means we're in this fold position we're grabbing elbows and we're just rocking side to side here. Letting gravity do the work. And this way it doesn't matter if your hands touch the ground or not. Just moving with your breath, with your body. Working in your hamstrings. Deeply. Keep rocking. You can bend the knees too if that feels more stable. And let's 
drop the hands towards the ground and slowly bring the hips down with us, coming to a yogi squat. If you need, you can place blocks, books, anything under your heels if your heels aren't on the ground so you feel more stable. If you're okay, feet on the ground, bring your hands to your heart center. And let's take three deep breaths here. You can keep your hands on the ground as well, if you need to. Use this contra pressure between your elbow and your knees to open your heart forward and find this beautiful long spine here. This is a great pose to work on your posture. Here we'll drop the hands towards the ground and bring the knees towards the ground as well, coming into a wide angle seat. The feet are touching together and the knees are wide. We're gonna come into a fun pose called Lion's Breath Pose, Simhasana. We're gonna bring the hands on the ground and turn the fingers towards you slowly, coming into a nice deep wrist stretch. The next part of this posture could be a little bit silly, but I highly encourage you to try it. It's good for the soul to let out this energy, to let out this courage and strength from within. So from this posture with this nice wrist stretch, you're going to inhale through the nose deeply. Exhale, stick your tongue out and roar like a lion on the exhale. Let's do that two more times. Inhale. Exhale, open your eyes big, inhale last time, exhale, beautiful, beautiful lion poses. From here we'll drop down onto our bellies, coming into a wide angle child's pose, releasing from that deep wrist stretch. You can bring the arms forward, adding the shoulder opening sequence part of it. Or you can bring the hands behind on the outside of your legs towards your feet. Your forehead can be on the ground or you can look towards the side. If you have any pillows next to you, you can also rest on the pillow as well. All variations are welcome. And let's just be here for a moment. The child's pose releases tension from the back, works in the hip joint, ankles, feet knees. It's just an all-around beautiful relaxing posture. You can also be done with the legs together if this wide angle version of it is too much for you. You can close the knees, that's okay as well. Slowly walk the hands back up and come to a seat. We'll bring the feet in front of us and bring the soles of the feet together, coming into a bound angle pose or butterfly or cobbler's pose. There's a lot, there's lots of names for this posture. And let's take a moment to bring the feet as close as we can towards the body, working more on the inner hips first. And just kind of shaking the knees out, letting the inner hip warm up. This can be a deep hip opener for someone that has less flexible um, hips or knee joints and hip joints. And then we'll slowly come forward on our fingertips to wherever you get to. And then close your eyes and let's take 10 deep breaths here. Doesn't matter if you're still sitting up, just working on finding this long spine, or if you're all the way down on the ground, every body is different. So just listen to yours and find your spot. And take 10 deep breaths there.
slowly come up, walking the fingers back up. And let's try this a little bit different now. We'll bring the feet forward as far as we can while keeping the soles of the feet together. And now we'll work on the external hip, the outside of your hip region. So inhale the hands up, long spine. Exhale, let's come forward again. So this time it'll feel a little bit different since we're working on a different part of the hip joint. Taking five deep breaths here as it's a little bit deeper, a little bit more sensitive, so we won't be here as long. Slowly come back up. Let's close the legs and bring them forward. Trying to find this 90 degree angle. Again, if you don't have as flexible hamstrings, you might find that your lower back starts to curve back and you're working more from the back now than the hamstrings. So if you have a block or a book or anything that you can sit on, I would recommend doing that because when you sit on a block, it automatically tilts your upper body forward and works more from the hip joint than from the back. So if you need that, please do that now. If not, you're with me in a 90 degrees angle here. Working on this nice long straight spine with your legs straight in front of you. Let's flex in the feet to make sure the legs are super active. And take a deep breath here. Inhale, the hands will come up. And exhale, let's come forward to a forward fold, wherever you get to. If you have any lower back pain, I would recommend working from a straight back. And that could mean bending the knees and working, like I said, in a, in a standing forward fold where we bring our belly and our upper body towards our thighs and then work on straightening the legs from there while still maintaining that connection. If it's okay, you can just fold so wherever you get to. And let's take a couple deep breaths here. Again, reminding you to use your breath as a tool. It's a really important part of yoga. Every inhale, looking for that extra length. Every exhale, going a centimeter deeper into that posture. Even if it feels impossible, I promise your muscles will allow for it. Still flexing in the feet. One more deep breath, go a little bit deeper, and inhale, come back up, long spine, hands up towards the ceiling, exhale, let's bend that left knee and come into a seated twist here, a deep seated twist, the foot should be by the knee, left foot by your right knee, left hand comes back behind you and make sure it stays close to the body so you can still maintain this long spine. Because when the hand comes too far back, you're more of just collapsing into that arm and feel less stable here. So we want to bring the hand as close as possible, keeping this long spine. Inhale the right hand up. Exhale, let's bring the right elbow to the outside of your left knee. You can stay here, or you can choose to go really deep, looking behind you over your left shoulder, trying to maintain this straight line within your shoulders. So you can look at your shoulders for a moment and see if they're straight with your body or if they're still at an um, angle facing forward. You really want to go deep into this upper body twist here. The, the right hand can be up or down, whatever feels comfortable for you. Feel this slight massage here between your belly and your thigh every time they touch it together when you breathe. This is a really great method to actually become more in tune with this abdominal um, organ massage that I was talking about earlier. Let's inhale back 
to center, straighten the leg. Exhale, bend the right knee now, coming next to the left knee. And come back down for a moment. Make sure that you're really seated on the floor, long spine, flexing in the left knee, in the left foot. Right hand comes behind you, close to the body, making sure you're nice and stable, keeping that long, straight spine. Inhale the left hand up. Exhale to the outside of your right knee, either keeping the hand up or down, whatever feels more comfortable for you. And you can stay looking towards the side or all the way back behind and over your right shoulder, going deeper into the twist. Breathing deeply, becoming more aware of what's going on in your belly region in twist positions. You're truly stimulating every abdominal organ, activating them, allowing them to work better. Inhale, back to center, straighten out the leg. Exhale, let's drop the hands forward and come onto our backs. Now I like to finish most of my practices with an inversion. Inversion poses are poses where your heart is above your head, allowing the effects of gravity to reverse or to loosen up. So we want to place our hands by our hips and we're going to come into a bridge posture. It can be as high as comfortable for you. Also a little bit of a back bend, so that's good too. Make sure the legs are hips distance and facing forward. It's super important that your knees and feet aren't facing inward or outward because it will also affect your back within the back bend. So we want to make sure the legs are forward. Take a deep breath. And inhale, push off of your hands and your feet to bring the weight towards your shoulders and lift your hips towards the sky. Make sure your knees haven't opened in this position. It can feel sometimes that it's not, but it, it does on its own. So make sure you're really pressing into the soles of your feet, connecting with the earth under your feet to feel grounded, to feel stable. Hmm. You don't have to go as high as possible. Just find a nice place for you that you feel stable, that you're still capable of pressing into your feet and feeling comfortable. It's really important to feel comfortable in your yoga postures. Taking a couple more deep breaths here. One more. And slowly release your hips back down towards the ground. Let's bring our knees into our chest and give ourselves a big hug, wrapping around your knees, hugging the opposite elbows, bringing your head towards your knees in complete flexion, complete compression. Feeling like a fetus in the womb, am I right? <laughs> Slowly release. It's a really great posture to feel safe and stable and secure. And let's come into our Shavasana. Opening the feet as wide as your mat or maybe a little bit wider. The hands will come by your hips. Shoulders away from the ears and back down towards the ground to make sure you're really relaxed in the shoulders. You can tuck your chin in towards your chest a little bit to feel your neck a little bit more towards the ground as well. And close your eyes. Just like we did in our seated meditation, Shavasana is also a great meditative posture. Just connecting to your breath, connecting to the, your sensations, feeling your body against the ground, wherever it's connected. 
listening to the sounds around you. Shavasana in Sanskrit is translated to corpse pose in English. So really you should just feel like dead weight, completely surrendering to the ground beneath you. Try not to jitter around or itch or scratch or open the eyes or find little things to get out of the posture, to get out of your meditative state, which the ego will do. So just be aware of that. When you start to notice things, see if you can return to your breath, return to your sensations. And those little needs to move and to adjust might just fade away. All we feel here is the belly rising and falling. The rest of the body should be completely relaxed. Even all the little muscles in your face, the spacing between your eyebrows, your mouth, your ears and cheeks, everything should just feel like it's melting towards the ground. Also make sure you're not clenching your jaw. Sometimes that happens without even noticing. Take one more deep breath together, inhaling completely, filling up the whole body with new oxygen. And exhaling completely, emptying out the whole body, feeling your belly hit the ground beneath you. Releasing all that carbon dioxide. Let's turn with our whole body towards the right side using our right arm as a pillow and placing our left hand on our heart. Just taking a couple of moments to feel your heartbeat, to feel the power of your heart. When we lay on the right side, we give this heart space a little bit more space. <laughs> a little bit less pressure. Slowly using your hands, keep your eyes closed and let's meet each other in a comfortable seat. It can be any seat that's comfortable for you. Just close your eyes still, keep them closed. Just feeling the circulation flow back down into your body. Returning to your normal breathing pattern. Bring your hands to heart center. Namaste. Thank you for practicing with me today. I hope you learned a lot. Thank you.